I am the Rico Ball for, and this is Uncut News. Topping tonight's broadcast is a report that the nation's security agencies are currently investigating the latest suspected act of military provocation from Venezuela. Yesterday, miners in the border town of Eterimbang in Region 7 recorded videos of a military fighter jet taking multiple passes over the area. It is believed that only one jet was involved in the illegal incursion. This auction comes just weeks after the Venezuelan Navy arrested Guyanese fishermen claiming that they were illegally fishing in their territory. Our government is currently considering their next move. Less than one day after getting the boot and sweet man small is buck with a vengeance. Seeing as he now has Frank Anthony's blessings to stay, Rudy Small waddled his way back to the Linden Hospital this morning, much to the anger of the nurses he insulted. This reignited the protest calling for his removal, but the police got involved after they blocked Small Man from entering. Only Small's driver was arrested in the whole fracas after he allegedly assaulted the nurse, breaking a phone in the process. Well, I shouldn't be too surprised that the government reversed their original decision. Why, if I had a dollar for every time a nation's government disappointed me, well, I'd still be broke, because I never gave them my trust to begin with. Ha-ha! This morning, the dark workers in Port Kaituma became amateur firefighters after a gas pump explosion in the MV Barima's engine room sent the old boat up in smoke. The fire broke out while the cargo was being offloaded. However, it's unclear what exactly made the fuel pump burn as the vessel had arrived in Port Kaituma since Sunday. Remedial works were done on this bucket of boats in January following an engine failure. Literally, that was just the latest in a series of failures of the boat. Anyway, the Ministry of Public Works said they will repair the floating rust heap as soon as possible instead of expediting the purchase of a new one. According to this year's budget, taxpayers will supposedly save $1 billion or more on government salaries by firing up new political appointees. Now, I say supposedly because I trust the water from my washroom sink more than I trust government statistics. Anyway, the 2021 budget estimates a total of $5.1 billion was budgeted for the Ministry of the Presidency for this year, of which salary costs amounted to $621.5 million. In 2019, that number was $1.937 billion and the total expenditure was $11.8 billion. The reduction in employment costs alone amounts to some $1.3 billion. I hope I didn't get you lost in all the numbers I've said so far. Anyway, this was done after firing close to 700 employees who they claim were all political appointees. But I doubt these savings will last for long because it's just a matter of time before they refill those positions with their own political appointees. Gotta love that revolving door of political power, am I right? Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale, this is 2018 Suzuki Swift RS Sports Edition. It comes with Bluetooth, CD stereo, steering controls, crystal lights, mug rims, fog lamps, and much, much more. Pay cash for $3.6 million. Or pay down as low as $720,000 with around $70,000 monthly, and it's yours. Call the WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit their showrooms at 171 Peter Row Street, Queenstown, or Lot 2 Lamar Street, and tell them Noriko sent you for this week. Sweet deal. Canu says they have launched an investigation into Monday's discovery of over 300 pounds of cocaine in Jamaica in containers shipped from the port of Georgetown. The drugs were unearthed in two containers at the Kingston Freeport after agents over there searched the whole shipment coming from this country. The suspected cocaine totaled 306.5 pounds, exactly. The shipment was destined for Haiti and China. Kanu claims to be in close contact with their counterparts, and a half-hearted investigation is currently ongoing. The missing floating death boat has been found, or at least authorities believe so. Almost a full two weeks after our government gave up its search, the government of Nicaragua said yesterday that the bodies of six people have been found in a small boat with no engine. It was found drifting about a mile out to sea near Cayo, Los Palomas. I don't know what that is, but anyway, it's off the coast of Nicaragua. According to Nicaragua, the corpses were all too badly decomposed for immediate identification. But one did possess the passport of a Ghanaian national. Whether or not it actually was his is another question. I mean, obviously, because the poor bloke was 
probably uh, reduced to, well, corpse stew by now, but nevertheless, an initial examination indicates all those aboard died of dehydration or heat stroke close to a month ago. This morning, the body of an unidentified man was fished out of a canal at Crawl and Wellington Streets in Georgetown. Authorities have since removed the body. Eyewitnesses say that the body was not in a decomposed state, indicating that he may have died quite recently. Efforts are being made to determine the man's identity. You can multiply your cash by selling Digicel Top Up. This is a legit way you can earn some extra money at your business or to supplement your existing side hustle. Become a Top Up vendor quick and easy through Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 685 31094 for more info. It's now time for today's runner report. Today, the nation recorded 22 new cases. There are now a total of 199 persons dead and six persons in the ICU. There are now a total of 364 persons in home isolation, and the total number of known confirmed cases in the country now stands at 8,648. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds. And remember to give six feet of space between you and others. Now, let's take a look at news in the region. America has donated $750,000 to develop a crime scene simulation facility at the Trinidad and Tobago Police Services Training Academy. The new crime scene simulation facility will enable investigators to hone their skills in typical environments where crime occurs, including a home and a bank. This investment is expected to contribute to additional arrests, better collection of evidence, and more successful prosecutions. Over the past five years, the U.S. has given Trinidad over $10 million in security assistance. This includes training, equipment, and even police doors. Oh, and by the way, since we're talking about Trinidad, Kamala did in fact blame the PNM, just like I said she would. In response to the criticism from them, the opposition leader defended her actions, calling them all deadbeat ministers and a set of muppets. So she said she had to do what she felt was necessary, which was, I guess, embarrassing them on the world stage. If you own one of the best diesel engines in the world, then the name Cummins is very familiar to you. But even the best engines need spare parts, am I right? Powered automotive truck spares and engine parts at 1161 EE Eccles stocks come in engine part for 6BT and 6CT engines and much more. Call the WhatsApp 697-0171 or follow Powered Automotive Truck Spares and Engine Pots on Facebook. Over in St. Lucia, one woman remains terrified to leave her home days after she was chased by an unknown masturbating male. The woman said on Saturday she was on a routine walk in a neighborhood when she noticed some pervert furiously pumping behind a clump of bushes. She ignored him and continued her run. But this is when he decided to chase her down with his birdie in hand. Eventually, a family in the area noticed the commotion and came to her rescue, thus scaring the creep off. He ran away. She reported the incident, but she feels that the cops are not taking the report seriously, just like cops over here. This concerns her deeply, as according to the residents in the community, this has actually happened several times before. However, they didn't say if these other incidences also involved this same pumping individual. Who said luxury can't be affordable? Move into your own home in 2021. Lenora Estates West Coast MRR properties are within your reach. Move out of the landlord's place and put that rent money towards your own 5,000 square foot property. Call the WhatsApp 592-618-5702 or call plus 1-516-476-2172 for more info. And now for our weird news story of the day. A man built his ex-girlfriend an entire island in hopes of winning her back, only for it to sadly fail. The private island was built by a 30-year-old man only known by his last name, Shu. Well, Mr. Shu used all of his life savings for the extravagant stunt, all 15,000 US dollars worth. While the gesture failed to win back his lover, it's now become a magnet for other couples looking for a romantic place to meet in the He Tu village in the Chinese province of Guangdong. 
Oh, I hope I pronounced that place correctly. Anyway, the couple called it quits after Shu moved to the countryside in his hometown to take care of his elderly parents while his girlfriend stayed in the city. After beginning the project back in December, Shu completed the island in January. His ex-girlfriend was said to be moved by the beautiful gesture, but ultimately asked for him to look for someone better than her and someone more deserving. Pity. Oh well, moving on to our uncut news viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your sponsors in the comments, and we will read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, The Linden Hospital CEO has been fired for his comments. Do you think that this is a sign that the government is open to listening to its workers, or do you think they were just looking for an excuse to get rid of the small man? Jay Jiram said, Seems like some people have a big beef with a small man. Hey, <laughs> I like that, Jay. Danraj Mohan said, Setting an example against people who said words to employees, if allegedly abusive, or create a negative effect on them, it all must be investigated and dealt with immediately. And Shane Isley said, It is the guilt of the nurses that led them to protest, the CEO cutting up their runnings. On a serious note, the firing of the CEO was ridiculous, but even so, I wonder what kind of leadership he carried out to allow nurses to leave their shifts without discipline. No wonder they had the audacity to protest when he called them out. Great answers, people. I wish I could have read them all, but we don't have the time. And also, like I already said, the government has flipped that decision faster than a Chinese acrobat. Anyways, for tonight's question, how do you feel the government should respond to the fighter jet over Ettering Bang? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in Thursday's episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Rico Bullford saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now.